Um, and so obviously there are probably three books that I would definitely suggest. One is, of course, William White's Slaying the Dragon. He's probably going to become the senior historian of all of addiction medicine, and that's a good thing because he's good at it. The other I would get is by Dr. David Musto, M-U-S-T-O. It's called The American Disease. And then the third one I would get is called Creating the American Junkie by Carolyn G. Acker. Okay, Acker, Musto, White. Those three books will give you a very, very good feel for exactly how things incrementally switched from what was largely seen as a problem best handled between doctor and patient to a slow redefining of the addict. You see, we didn't always believe that addicts were disease-spreading, criminally-minded, sociopathic, unpatriotic little vampires, okay? Um, there was a time when they were just seen as, you know, unfortunate folks, and a lot of them were, you know, middle-income uh, uh, women in the center of the country, you know, in the rural part of the country. A lot of them were, were war veterans. But when we passed, excuse me, when we passed the Harrison Narcotics Act in 1914, what that did is it, it, it was the tax act. It wasn't a, a, a criminal act at first. It was the tax act that said, okay, now we're going to start imposing some control on drugs. And then there were two subsequent Supreme Court decisions that basically ruled that the, that the treatment of drug addiction by a doctor to an active addict is not the legitimate practice of medicine. And so what that did is it, it started this ball rolling and then the law started to draw their power from Harrison that slowly turned this from a medical problem into a clinical problem. And that's why now we find ourselves very much out of step with other countries that are trying to you know, take a different approach. You, you, you go just across the border to Canada, everything changes. They're, they're harm reduction is a dirty word down here. Harm reduction up there is their national policy. And so what's happening is that I think we're gonna start to find that our that our legend, that our um, that our normal hegemony in this, our normal control, our ability to dictate drug policy to other nations, is going to start to get some resistance. And, and I think that if we start to change, then then it won't be you know embarrassing for us. So, uh, but again, it's a fascinating history. I recommend those three books, um, and then you'll you know you'll hear all the there's a fascinating cast of characters and little stories and things like that that led us to where we are today. I know that the vast majority of people in jail are either addicts or they were high or drunk at the time that they committed their crime. I don't think I could point to actual statistics, but I, I could if you, you know, if you email me. And you can email me at addictiondoctor.com, all spelled out. And if any of you would like these slides, I'd be glad to send them to you. Addictiondoctor.com, all spelled out. I'll send you the actual um, data that, that I can look up. Yeah. Were there any others? Yes, sir. That's the tricky thing. And, and when I wrote this slide, oh yeah, what is the gold standard? How do you really tell the difference between the abuser and the addict? Well, people are not using drugs. People are using medicine. Exactly, yeah, that, you're absolutely right. The slide, I'll be honest with you, little deceptive, right? I've drawn a thin line here, but no one's really sure. Is it thin? Is it thick? Can people go this way and then that way? Well, <laughs> there is actually some evidence that people can go this way. That is not the kind of thing that we just, you know, announce to patients, okay? Uh, <laughs> that's, that's top secret for your ears only, right? <laughs> um, uh, and it's a very small cohort, by the way, of people who have met the diagnosis for addiction through the DSM-IV criteria for substance dependence, and after a period of abstinence, they've been able to go back to moderately drinking, okay? Very small group. Everyone wants to be in that group, right? <laughs> and when a patient finds that information out and they come at me with it uh, and it's getting out there, I'll remind them of the story of Audrey Kishlein, who was going through this exact thing. You know, someone said, oh, you're an addict. You're definitely an addict. The mere fact that you're even questioning your addiction is further evidence that you're an addict, okay? That's the famous denial tautology, which really proves nothing, right? 
And she said, well, okay, you say that, but I don't think so. I think I'm just a bad abuser, and I think I can go back to moderating. And she started an organization called Moderation Management. It's not for alcoholics, mind you. It's for people right here, a really bad abuser who needs to just learn how to moderate. And so she did this very, very popular group, as you can imagine, grew much faster than AA, okay? <laughs> And then she wrote a letter to the MM website and said, you know what, um, I'm real proud of MM and I'm glad what you're doing. I think I might be an alcoholic, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> go back to AA. And unfortunately, the damage was done. She got drunk, she got into a car, and she killed her father and her daughter in Washington and went to prison. And see, that's the thing, is that the, the risk, the, the, the consequences of being wrong are so very, very great. And so what, what more and more we do, and again, AA has always known this. We're, you know, we loathe to label anyone an alcoholic. If we're not sure, try a little controlled drinking, right? That makes sense from, it's hard to do that if you're a doctor, right? Try a little controlled crack smoking. That doesn't go over very well. But <laughs> <laughs> what, what I'll do is I'll just roll with the resistance. I'll say, listen, you know, if you don't want to admit to being an alcoholic, if you don't want to take on that label, I understand. I understand. But the treatment for both patients in the first year is exactly the same. Get a year off. Right. Right. Yep. Well, one of the things that I think about with the parity argument is I don't want ad an addicts or addiction to be held to a greater standard than the rest of medicine. So I would use the very same, you know, there are certain vagaries associated with other diseases too. And so we, have, we will tolerate that vagary with diabetes and other diseases, certainly many, many psychiatric diseases. Addicts deserve that, you know, that little fudge factor too. But I think if we can ever tell the difference, if we really have a test that will be able to tell the difference, it will be in neuroimaging. We will finally get neuroimaging scans that are detailed enough, that are kind of like high def scans, that we can actually start to pick out the individual differences in brain activity between the abuser and the addict. And then I will be able to walk into a court of law and say, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this is the MRI of a sociopath, send them to prison. This is the MRI of an addict, and you'll notice it's the same as the defendant. This is a patient, please let me get him treated. And when that happens, understand how a lot of these questions will simply evaporate into thin air. And we'll, we'll be in a world where, you know, people will no longer question. And I'm starting to see that with young medical students. They're, they're not asking the same questions. They think differently than even we do. And that gives me a lot of hope. Did I answer your question? Okay, all right. Yes, ma'am, I'll, I'll take one more question. I'll stay after for questions, but I, I know I've gone kind of long. Sure. Which slide was that? Was it that one? Okay, yes, this is my most famous slide. Well, what would you like to know about it? <laughs> yes, absolutely, and I think that's the power, right, that's, that's the power of the dopamine hypothesis is that it shows that you're st really starting out in the same place, it's the same basic mechanism and so many of the same rules should apply. Uh, and so that's why I think we have been so 